technique is called laying a watercolour wash. It sounds simple, you just paint onto some paper and you have a flat, nice flat wash. It's not as easy as you would think. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, a traditional way of laying a wash and it's using one colour, one brush, plenty of water. I'm going to lay um, an ultramarine wash. Load the brush with colour, start at the top and the board is sloping at about 20 degrees. Now the key to this is, if I do this nice and slowly, is a bead of colour along the bottom of the wash and you bring it down from side to side and then put some more paint into that bead and continue going down the page. Just keep on going. If you want to add a little bit more colour to that and the important thing is to have the water in that bead along the bottom of the wash. When you get to the bottom of your panel, wash the brush out, squeeze the water out of the brush, then just lift that colour out the bottom of the, the wash. So you remove the bead and there is a nice flat ultramarine wash. The next wash I'm going to show you is uh, a graded wash. So it's going to go from a strong colour at the top and become lighter towards the bottom. And again we just use one colour, we, we use ultramarine, start at the top of the wash, make sure there's plenty of paint in the bead and just bring that down Feed the colour into the wash, like that, and to make it go lighter, wash the brush out, add some water to that mix so it's slightly lighter, and put that new colour into the bead, wash the brush out. And put that new lighter colour into the bead. Let's bring that down a little bit more. Some more water, hint of colour. Into just clean water now and just fade that out. So we have a strong colour at the top and it bleeds down to nothing. This is a variegated wash so it's going to start with one colour then change bleed into a second colour. So we're going to start with ultramarine, so at the top slowly bring the colour down into that bead, add some more colour to it, and just bring the bead down. So that's a flat wash for starters. brush out, change the colour. This is permanent rose. So mix the colour up and drop that colour into that bead and then start to bring that down the paper. 
It's more permanent rows. Create a bead. Then into a flat wash of permanent rows. So we start with strong colour at the top and it bleeds into another colour at the bottom. This is a, a big brush wash. Um, it's the type of wash I would use for, for skies. So just wet the sky area first with some clean water. Using a big brush, this is the golden leaf brush. So, plenty of water. So there's, there is plenty of water, but it's not in puddles. So it, the paper glistens rather than having standing water. Then, with some ultramarine, mix the colour onto the brush. And I'm going to start at the top of the sky, and as I get down towards the bottom, the water on the paper will dilute the colour in the brush and it will become lighter. So we start at the top with a nice strong colour, ultramarine, and then just start to go from one side to the other. And as the brush travels down the sky, it becomes lighter because the colour is being diluted by the water on the paper. Those streaks will just bleed wet into wet into the first watercolour wash. How simple is that? This is a technique called wet into wet. So we're going to drop wet paint onto a wet paint, wet into wet. So I'm going to start with some water. So I'm just going to show you um, a simple sky using wet into wet. So wet the paper first, some blue, ultramarine, start at the top, nice strong colour, colour becomes lighter as it drifts down towards the horizon, change the brush to the large detail brush and we'll have a grey colour, so ultramarine and burnt umber. And drop in some clouds, wet into wet. So the paint just seeps into the first colour you get nice soft edges. And if I want a, a darker colour underneath here, just mix the dark colour. And while it's still wet, wet into wet, drop the darker colour into the underside of the cloud. And just let the paint do the work. This is a technique called wet on dry, which is wet paint on a dry surface. It's fairly obvious really, but the problem is if you put the wet paint onto a damp surface, it simply doesn't work. So the main colour must be dry before you put the other colour onto it. So we'll start with something like a, a tree trunk, we'll use country olive, a tree trunk and some branches. So another branch coming out here. There's the first colour, we just simply let it dry. So with a darker mix of the first colour, country olive with some burnt umber. So this is wet paint, dry surface. So 
So start to put in some shade and we can then paint in some detail onto the dry surface so that detail won't dissolve into the first colour. So painting the tree bark like that. So this is still wet. So if I put a darker colour into that, that's wet into wet. And I don't get any hard edges. But once you move into the dry area and put the brush stroke on, you get a hard edge. So that's wet on dry. There we are wet on dry. This is a dry brush technique. Basically it's using a dry brush. See this is all very, very very simple stuff. So wet the brush and then dab the brush onto some tissue. That re removes the excess moisture from the brush. Then pick up colour you want, that's ultramarine and burnt umber. Just again get rid of that excess paint from the brush and then holding the brush horizontally I'm just going to drag the brush over the surface of the paper and the surface of the paper is a rough surface. So just pull that down and the paint just catches the raised part of the textured paper and skips over the dips. So you can, you can create a texture by just dragging the brush over the surface of the paper. And that's called dry brush. Or the tip is remove the paint or the excess water using some kitchen towel. We do a beautiful sky and suddenly it goes wrong. Um, here's a good example. Uh, it's a watercolour sky, wet into wet, and suddenly you realise you've got some hard edges. And the reason for that is um, you're just taking too long doing the painting. The, the background colour is wet into wet, but the darker colour was put on a little bit too late. Just allowing this top part of the painting to dry creates these hard edges. See it's soft underneath there where this is still damp or wet but on the top it's, it's dried and so it's uh, wet on a dry surface leading to a hard edge. Now <laughs> it's all very well telling you how it goes wrong but when it does go wrong how do you get out of jail? Very very simple. What we do is use a big brush, some clean water, wet the area around the problem. So just paint over the top. Now just use a soft brush Make sure you've covered everything. Now the reason for wetting this is when we remove or shift some of this colour, we want it to bleed into a wet background so it then becomes wet into wet again. Then with a stiff hair brush, this is my uh, golden foliage brush. It's a stiff hair brush made from bristle and hair. And all you do is just scrub over the edge like that and this edge here just agitate the pigment on the paper there's a hard edge there just blend that in so it's a nice soft edge 
There you are, hard edges gone. Now, this guy is suffering from cauliflowers. We've all heard of cauliflowers, sometimes they're called bleed backs or run backs, um, secondary drying lines, whatever you want to call it, generally we don't want it. And I'm just going to show you a very, very simple technique how to remove cauliflowers. Cauliflowers are created by, if you're doing a wash or um, so you put wet, a wet wash on first, then you try and add a second colour and the second colour is slightly wetter than the first colour. So you're putting a wet wash onto a drying wash and the colour just, just pushes the other colour away and when it dries, it dries on a line. And that's called a secondary drying line. You wet the surface around the cauliflower. There's that hard edge there. So you go beyond the line. And the reason for that is when you remove this paint here and the paint travels into the wet, it doesn't stop at a dry line. So it will flood into a wet background. So just make sure that's evenly wet. Then with a stiff hair brush, this is the foliage brush, not too wet. And just scrub at the line. It just shifts the paint. There's that dark there, so just agi agitate the, uh, the paint. It's going, going, gone. And that light area, if you want it darker, so whatever colour you've used, this is ultramarine and burnt umber. So if we drop that darker colour into the cloud, just blend that in. So all the hard edges have gone and you've repaired your painting.